So you look it up, because you want to make sure you can handle the table. 2177 was the area here, so we can put down the 2 and now maybe I should erase that. Sarah? Well, Ryan, do you recommend that right, right bigger? It, it came out fine. Oh, really? Good. This is 2177. The area here, of course, is corresponding to you know, the image is also 2177. And the alpha, therefore, is going to be, alpha is going to be 2177 plus 2177, or exactly 14, 15, 3, 43.54, which is about 44% if you round it to two places. So an alpha of 44% is not acceptable, because it makes me, we're saying if you follow this rule, whoever gave it, no, a few people gave it to us, you're going to make a mistake 44% of the time. You're going to say perfectly good tables are bad 44% of the time, and that's not good. So we have to start, go back and do this again. We can make the sample size bigger, which we're not going to do. Even you can do that in real life. We're just going to make the boundaries bigger. So I was hoping, again, a little bit late for next time, but if anybody, I was hoping somebody would put on the board the same exact calculation picking another pair of numbers, like maybe 2.5 and 6.5. Let's see, go through the whole thing again. This time the alpha might be, I don't know, 15%, which is also pretty big. And then try it a third time. Maybe try, you're going to try, you know, 1.5 and 8.5. And 1.5 and 7.5, there's got to be symmetric around 4.5. This time might come out to like 2%, which is too small, because we want to get it like, like Goldilocks, we want to get it down to 5%. And we, we, spe we want to get it down to 5%, and your job for homework was to keep doing this a couple of times. Just, you know, it's sort of tedious, but it's good practice for Chapter 7 and good practice for understanding the material. <coughs> keep doing this until eventually you end up with a pair of numbers that exactly comes out, or very closely comes out to 5%, meaning 2.5% on one side, 0 0.025 on the other side. And again, anybody, who, who did it? Okay, what, what, what did you get? What did you get for your final pair of numbers? Um, 2 and 7. 2 and 7. So it turns out that 2 and 7 are the magic numbers that make it work out exactly to 5%. What did you get? No, 2 and 7, but do you want, it, do you want us to do it exactly three times for this? Now, when you hand in the spinner assignment, because everybody knows that the answer is two and seven, you can't tell me, well, I just got a lucky guess and I put down two and seven. I want to see this at least three times. I want you to see, I want to see an initial guess which cannot be 3.5 and 5.5. In other words, when you give me your first guess, you want to make it 3.4 and 5.6, that's okay, but don't show me 3.5 and 5.5. Then you got to show me an intermediate <coughs> guess, whatever it might be, and then you got to show me the two and seven if you did it that way. If you want to do it honestly, it might take you four or five times. Now, maybe you're not going to get it exactly, to, you know, but now that we know the answer, it's hard to do it honestly. <laughs> but that's the uh, situation. I want to see it three times. If you do it two times or one time, or you start, I'm just not going to give you credit for it. And since this affects about 16, 17, 18, it affects about four or five parts of the spinner assignment, you might as well do it right and get credit for it. Somebody else said yes, John. So this is number 18? No, uh, John. Can you explain that last Anyway, we went, went from which, which part you back? We're back here? Okay. Folks, again, folks, 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 folks. Again, I, have, I, I, don't, I, want to embarrass, I don't want to embarrass John, but I have to make a point. The point is, when you ask me a simple question, can you please repeat it? I get so few of those questions. And this stuff, if everybody got a 95 on this first test, they say, well, everybody knows it. That's why there are no questions. But in fact, if half the test gets 50s, means that a lot of people sitting here right this moment don't understand what we're talking about. And those people should stick up their hands and say, Professor, can you repeat this, repeat that? And I want to get to train you, I use the terminology, but to get into the habit of just simply asking a question when something is not clear, and I'll be very happy to answer it. Because again, we're, we're going to be, I can tell you this, maybe I told you this already, we're going to finish the term before the end of the term. So I'm not, I'm not concerned about time, like I have to rush through a lecture in order to get back on schedule. We're ahead of schedule already. So, so please, so first of all, pass it back to John. Now, now that we're making that big speech, I forgot your question. What was the question again? Where did 2177 came? Yes. So here? Yes. Okay. Well, we converted, you know, we want to find the, the, our, our, our main goal is to get the area below, uh, below 3.5, <coughs> or, or an area above 3.5.5, area meaning probability. So what is the area below 3.5? Well, you can sort of guess it. You can look at it. You can take an educated guess, whatever. But if by converting it to a Z diagram, we can get the answer to exactly. So 3.5 converts to a real order. 3.5 converts to, if I change this to a 3.5 here, 3.5 minus 4.5 is minus 1 divided by 1.28 comes out to minus 78. Just plug it into a calculator to verify that. 
minus 78 is, so what's the area to the left of minus 78? Well, you gotta go to the belt, the Z, the Z diagram, I don't know if you're happy with you. Look at minus 0.7, go across to column eight. I mean, you gotta know how to use, you're not, you're, not, you're not sure how to use the Z diagram? Or? And then it, you, when you look at it, you're gonna see it, 2177 here, 0.21. So the area to the left of minus 78 is 2177, about 22%. I'm not, so I'm not sure what the question is. Is that, that am I answering it? So this is 22% and that's 22%, so the total is 44% area. So then again, through, but the more, more important point besides the mechanics, and the mechanics is chapter six and chapter seven, but the interpretation is that 44% is not a good number. It represents an error rate happening 44% of the time. So you can improve that by pulling apart these boundaries, making it more generous, making it more liberal to accept the A0. And the question is, how far you gotta do that? Well, you keep doing it until it comes down to 5%, which is the convention for most examples. The next and last part of the theory that we that we uh, that we um, had last time is why not get it down to four percent or three percent or one percent or a zero percent? Now, how can you get it down to zero percent by making the boundary zero to nine? By making, it, in other words, no matter what comes out of the random <coughs> number table, we're going to accept the table it means you'll never reject it. So the chance of rejection is going to be zero. So you actually accomplished your goal of getting the type one error rate of alpha down to zero percent. The problem with that, as we said last time, so I'm not going to repeat it. I'm not going to ask you to repeat it. I'll, 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 I'll repeat it. Say yes, Sarah. Um, when I do the 5.0. Let, let me finish my step. I'll take your question in a second. So the question is, why don't we get the alpha down to five, lower than 5%? Because if you make it too generous, then you're going to wind up accepting every table, including bad tables. Because some tables are bad. If every table was good, there'd be no point in doing this. There are, some, in fact, some bad tables out there. So we have to actually to see, to, to be able to distinguish between a good table and a bad table. You can't say, I'm going to accept every single table. That's, that's ridiculous. There's no, no, no point in doing this whole thing. So you've got to make a balance between the type 1 error and now the other thing called the type 2 error, which, which we start to type 2 error, which is, <coughs> which is equal to beta. But the type 2 error is really the, the chance of rejecting, uh, if you end up rejecting H1 when the H1 is true, which you can see is the mirror image of this type type one error. That's called that's called a type two error, and a chance of that happening is called beta. So if you make the alpha really really small, then the beta gets really large. So it's like a, it's like it's like a fulcrum, curve. It's like a, a seesaw. And the trick is if you can understand this picture, which happens to be one of the slides on the course on, on, on available to you if you go to the course conference. <coughs> um, if you understand this, not very exact, when alpha goes down, beta goes up. Anybody can memorize that, but to really to be able to tell someone, if someone who's absent today comes in and says, you know, the professor said this is really important to understand, can you explain it to me? And you sit there and explain it to them, I'm showing them the pictures. If you can explain this to somebody, then you understand chapter nine. If you can't explain it, then you sort of, you don't really know it. Because once you get it, you get it. And that's what I want you to understand. When the alpha goes down too much, that's gonna mess up the beta. And that's really a summary of almost the entire thing. Yes, Sarah? Um, when, I did, when I did the math for the 3.5 and the 5.5, when I do 5.5 minus 4.5 and I divide that by 1.28, yes. I get 0.555, I don't get 0.78. No, I get 0.78. No, no, no. 0 0.78 is right. I'll tell you why it's right. But I only get it if I do the 3.5 minus 4.5. But when no, I do no, you, you're probably doing something wrong with your calculator in terms of parentheses and things like that. Just do it again. What I'm about to tell you is probably more important than everything else I'm going to teach you in stat two, which is just using really common sense when you do calculations. I'm going to try to estimate the answer before you start, Sarah. This is really valuable. I actually almost lost a job because I wasn't using my common sense. I just typed numbers into a computer. I made one little mistake out of a thousand numbers. The answer was ridiculous, and my boss said, "That can't be. I mean, that's a crazy number." And I said, "You know, you're right. I should have realized that." But you have to think about it. So at that point, they think about what they do. Anyway, just think, look. How much is four point zero? How much is one? 3.5 minus 4.5 is one. Sarah, one. One divided by 1.2 is what? One and 1.2 are very similar to each other. So the ratio got to be pretty close to one, right? So 0.78 makes a lot more sense than 0.5, right? So I'm sure you're making a mistake with your calculator. Yes. Uh, Two questions regarding the Z score. Z Michael, one. sorry. Yes. Um, it doesn't matter if it's like 3.5 or 5.5. Well, we, since, we, since we're purposely picking numbers that are symmetric, meaning one, this is one below 4.5, yeah. it's one of, so we'll come out, if you did it right, they should both be plus and minuses, which means, but it's easy to look up the negative z-score. If you look at minus 78, you're gonna get 2177. If you look at positive 78, you get a subtractive from 100%, which gives you an extra step. One more question along those lines. 
Isn't it 2.87? Why is it, or is it 1.28? 